All right, we want to take a news conference right now. The mayor is speaking after the resignation of Sean Lilloy. Let's listen in. The court order that he agreed to as part of his uh, release uh, when the indictment came down raised serious questions about his residency once again. His resignation is in the best interest of the city. Regarding filling the vacancy, I will consult, of course, with my colleagues, but here is my initial thought. There is a, uh, a multi-candidate race uh, to succeed uh, the now resigned incumbent in District 2. If any one of those candidates uh, wins a majority of the votes and therefore and thereby avoiding a runoff, they would not be sworn in uh, for a new term until December of 2024. If that were the case, and if a candidate were to win outright, I would recommend strongly to my colleagues that we appoint that individual the following week. If no candidate wins a majority in March, and there is a runoff, I would recommend appointing a caretaker to the seat. I recommend, I will recommend to my colleagues that uh, we do not fill the vacancy until, therefore, until after March the 5th. Because to appoint a caretaker now would mean that if a candidate won a majority, that that individual would not be able to start for, uh, for eight or nine months to the disadvantage of the district, which would have then chosen their preferred candidate for a full four-year term. That's my statement. I'm happy to answer your questions. I have a follow-up on the appointment, but I want to ask yeah. you this. Uh, John Lilloway, in his first 30 seconds, called you out. What is your response to what he had to say about you? Yeah. Um, obviously, Councilmember Lilloway is under a lot of pressure. And um, I just wish him the best. That's all. He did the right thing. And I wish him the best. I don't have a reaction. Um, i am uh, been in this business a long time. I stand by uh, everything that I have said and done, always uh, in the best interest of the city. I wish him the best. If I could tell, if you don't mind, uh, that follow up on the appointment. Uh, you said this is your initial thoughts. What is the process to making a final determination? On Consulting that? with my colleagues. And my, ultimately, I don't make the decision. My colleagues uh, and I make the decision. And so we will have a session uh, on this um, within the coming days. Consult with the city attorney about how uh, to best do that. And uh, we will... Um, and we will go from there. I'm just sharing with you, as I've already shared with a couple of them, what, what, my, uh, what my advice will be. Because I know it's, and the reason I'm doing it now is because I know this is going to be a question that's foremost in the mind of the residents of District 2 and many in the city. And given that the primary election is now about two months away, that's a short enough time to, uh, on balance, say, let's not fill it with a caretaker now. Let's see if somebody wins um, and, and appoint that person if they win. And if they don't and there's a runoff, well, then we will still have the remainder of the term to appoint somebody who can represent District 2 in the meantime uh, until the, the new member wins the November election and goes from there. I will say that I suppose just like the deferral process with redistricting that between now and the time we fill the vacancy, um, there's only one elected representative for the district and that's, uh, that's me. So I will do what we have done in the deferred areas of East Sacramento and other parts of the city and my team, uh, Chinua Rhodes, Director of Community Engagement, and my entire team will uh, represent the people of District 2. And Mayor, obviously you've had at least some time to reflect on this. Is there something different that could have happened in this process? I, I, well, first of all, 
you know, I'm not, and certainly the city is not responsible for um, whatever a United States attorney chooses to do uh, in uh, moving forward with very serious criminal charges. And like I said, um, in the criminal context, anyone, including Councilmember Lilloe, is presumed innocent um, unless and until proven guilty. And you know, there is a difference between widely reported allegations, which we all took seriously, um, and a formal federal indictment. A formal federal indictment with uh, detailed charges. Again, um, criminal charge, criminal case, that's one side of it. The other side of it is um, the distraction and the cloud over the city and the city council um, for uh, the council member to continue serving. And so um, he made his own decision. I think he made the right decision. Uh, Mayor, given that cloud you were mentioning, now that this resignation has been submitted, what can you do, what can the council do to restore the public's trust in the council and city government? I don't know that the, I'm sorry. <clears throat> I don't know that the city council has to do anything to restore the public trust. This is one member. One member. It's not the entire city council. And um, he is responsible for his own actions. And he's responsible for the decision he made today. I mean, yeah, I watched the video and, you know, you, you, you think about coming, all, coming in here all fired up and no. Feel kind of sorry for him. Feel bad for him. He's under a lot of pressure, obviously. And um, I know what I did was in the best interest of the city. And that's always going to be my frame. But I don't think there's a restoration of trust issue for the city. My colleagues and I um, are all working hard to um, represent our districts in the entire city on a whole wide range of problems and I'm looking forward to 2024. I got a lot of planes to land here in my last year. Um, Right, you've been listening to uh, Mayor Daryl Steinberg uh, reacting to the news today that Sean Lowy, the city council member for District 2, is going to resign. That is what the mayor wanted. He publicly called for Sean Lowy to resign. Sean Lowy initially refused, but today uh, posted a six-minute video to YouTube. Uh, CBS 13 Steve Large broke this information uh, earlier today on uh, X. And uh, now the mayor is talking about what's going to happen to replace Lilloe. And uh, what he would like to see happen is right now there are people running for District 2 in the primary, which is in March. And he'd like to see if there is a clear winner in March that that person take over the seat instead of appointing a caretaker right. who would essentially fill that seat until the March runoff. So we'll have to see what happens. But a very interesting development today. Sean Lilloe, of course, indicted on federal charges tied to how he was running his business the Viva supermarket chain throughout Sacramento. There were allegations that uh, he had undocumented workers and was not paying them fairly. That is now going through the federal court process. Daryl Steinberg said, hey, he made the right decision.